All right, hey guys, we're back. Tour nine here. Let's see if we can't get a few more holes for you guys. I'd really like to see start seeing hole two as a shoot. It's crazy. There's three shootout holes, right? Why why can I only get two of them? <laughs> so I've seen hole two um, in tour four. I've seen it. Um, I have one view for up for you guys. Uh, it was a headwind. Uh, very challenging, and uh, I'm really looking to get some better winds for you guys because I think you know average case wind is going to make that hole a lot easier. We're going to be able to f figure out the headwind, but it's going to be a little bit more challenging. But let's try to focus on this one for now. Um, we're going to set up for this pitch again, very similarly to what you saw me do last time. We're going to just lay it up. And um, I'm going to go at it with a katana ball this time. You can see with the massive headwind that, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to land it more centered like this. As opposed to getting very aggressively on the edge. I don't want to see you guys go into the rough. So I'd prefer to see you guys bring it back with some curl kind of like this. Um, and even with a great ball on the right, you know, it's going to kind of resist that wind. And it's not going to want to come back, so it should still shoot down the middle. And you can see we can get down very close to the edge of the fairway, um, which I do, you know, recommend you guys doing. Keep in mind that we are shooting to a lower target. Uh, and I caught the effects of that last time we played this one. And I did not play enough wind. So you additionally, if you guys are playing this hole and going for the pitch, you need to make sure that you're thinking about it playing to a downhill lower target, much lower. You can see that, uh, you know, behind those bushes, it kind of dips down, which is going to cause the ball to go higher up into the air. It's going to cause it to land higher. You can see the bounces are just ridiculous. It just like bounces way high up in the air, almost like a springboard, which is going to mean that you need to overplay the wind in the long and short of it. That's basically what it tells you. Um, you know, I'm very close to that same min type number that I was last time where I said I was gonna use a 2.0 per ring adjustment. Um, I'm gonna try to do something similar. Uh, keep in mind that I'm gonna keep the ball behind the hole and just kind of like this. Um, but I'm gonna play much more towards max this time because of, you can see that springboard effect. So I'm going to play, even though it is at mid, I'm going to play this six rings, for example, which is almost spot on max ring adjustment. So let's try to hit this. So you can see that it shoots way down to a lower target, and um, that's almost spot on what you need to do for wind. So if you get it down there towards uh, mid, just make sure that you play it more towards min distance. Uh, aside from that, it's going to be kind of anticipating that hop. So you can see my wind play was probably pretty spot on. It was just more about, you know, just kind of tweaking the side spin more than anything. Um, and uh, you, you can see in those side winds that it has a tendency to just kind of jerk much more to the right. Uh, I used just straight backspin and uh, it still had some right uh, momentum when you actually saw the rollout. So keep that in mind for yours. If you guys ever get more towards max distance, um, you might want to go an extra ring or two at least. Um, since this is the old hole, I'm not going to switch it out. We'll just add this one to the end. You guys have seen this many, many times. I don't need to uh, switch it out for you guys, but keep in mind that technique that I was mentioning on that par four that uh, you know shooting to that lower target and you can see how that greens kind of like a springboard anyway so it's really going to cause an overplay with the way that the ball guide kind of changes um, not sure what my opponent did there uh, but this kind of gives us a good opportunity to just kind of show you guys uh, maybe what we can do additionally with this guardian as opposed to going for the island now typically i wouldn't usually do this shot but i'm going to on a downwind i wouldn't typically do this shot at least 
Um, so we're going to play, you know, a little bit closer towards the max. Uh, I usually use a mid adjustment. I am going to go maybe just a little bit over four rings, 1.5 something. Um, ah, I was early on my timing. It's going to end up costing me. Uh, as you can see, it does just clip the rough. You know, that's one of the big reasons that I don't do that shot, but I just wanted to kind of show it to you. Um, if you ever get a headwind, it's going to be a very favorable thing. Um, I knew that I was going to hang on for the wind. That's the only reason that I even went for that there. But, uh, you know, had I hit perfect ball there, uh, I would have still uh, pulled it off anyway. So it really just came down to perfect ball timing. Um, and like I said, I had nothing to lose there. So that's why you saw me play it that way. Otherwise, I would just go for the island. That wind wasn't very hard. We could have just hit the island hop there very similarly. But there's plenty of video showing you that. So I wanted to do something a little bit different and just show you that when we do have Guardian on for this tour, especially had we got a headwind, that going for approach like that, um, especially if you already see your opponent dump it in the bunker, for example, that's going to be an easy technique for you to just get it inside of five yards and just kind of be done with the hole. So... Good luck there, guys, and catch you guys on the next one.